How on earth do you stay motivated as a single mom and an entrepreneur? I get asked this a lot and the answer is simple and complicated all at the same time. <laughs> Sometimes motivation is super easy to find because you just feel ready to take on the world. Other times, motivation has to be forced. In that case, motivation is more like discipline. So maybe discipline is the better choice of words here. I don't know. I have had way more than my share of challenges in my business life. And I've had way more than my share of setbacks when it comes to my businesses. And those can be really hard to get past. They just, they just can because they're so deflating because we put so much of ourselves into what we're working on. I think as a single mom in general, I think that's just kind of an intrinsic thing that happens. Like I put a lot of myself into everything that I do. I put a lot of myself into raising my children and I put a lot of myself into my businesses. So when things don't go the way I expect them to go or are disappointing in some way, it almost feels like a personal defeat. And that can be really, really hard to get over, but you just have to find a way to push past that. So let's talk about some ways to help you overcome those challenges. If you're new here, I'm Jen, single mom, artist, and entrepreneur, and this channel is all about building a life that you love and doing it all on your own. I have been a single mom for almost nine years now, and I've been an entrepreneur for pretty much my entire adult life. I currently run three small businesses. I have a massage therapy business. I have a stained glass art business. And I have a boudoir photography business. Failure is part of running a business. Failure is part of being an entrepreneur. And it is going to happen. And if it's not happening, if you're not failing at things, you're not trying hard enough. You're not taking enough risks because failure leads to growth. So let's talk about a couple of challenges that I've had in the last few years. It's really important to me that I be authentic with you and I can't be authentic if I don't share the hard stuff too, right? So let's talk about some failures. In, I believe, 2018, I signed up to do this women's expo here in Indianapolis, and I was using it specifically to showcase my boudoir photography business. And it was a very expensive show. It was, I think, $800 was the booth rental. I spent another close to $800 on supplies and things for that booth. I built that booth from scratch, so I spent a lot of quite a bit of money on display items for the booth, for photography samples, and things of that nature. I wanted it to look amazing, I wanted it to be eye-catching, I wanted it to be beautiful and perfect because that's how you draw people in, right? So I think all told I spent close to $1,600 on this booth. The event was a complete failure. It was heavily ever advertised, but no one came. In the course of two nine-hour days, I bet we had maybe 200 people come through the entire venue. It was awful. Absolutely awful. I have never been to an event that was such a giant flop. It was the worst event I have ever done in my life, and it was by far the most expensive event I have ever done in my life, and it was such a giant disappointment. And I remember after I packed my car back up and I was dragging things home thinking, oh, I didn't have that $1,600 to spend. And now it was gone and I had nothing to show for it because the event was just such a failure. Now events are iffy and you never know what you're gonna get out of an event. But I remember spending almost two weeks just being 
so utterly disappointed and upset and a little sick to my stomach because I was fairly newly divorced. Money was extremely tight and I just didn't have that money to spend. It was a huge gamble and it didn't pay off. I, I actually considered closing down my business. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes it's like that, right? Sometimes we feel like throwing in the towel. Things fail. I cannot tell you how many promotions I've run that didn't have a single booking off of them. I cannot tell you how many times I have put so much time and effort into building a new set and nobody was interested. But failures are gonna happen. And if you're not failing, then you're not taking any risks. And taking risks is a big part of being an entrepreneur. So you have to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Plain and simple. And I think I've hit a, reached a point where I'm, I'm pretty well there. I'm pretty okay with being uncomfortable anymore. And I know that things are gonna fail. Every time I try something new, sometimes it's a huge success and sometimes it isn't. And you just never know until you try. Being an entrepreneur in and of itself is difficult. It, it means a lot of time, a lot of effort, and a lot of dedication. And when you add being a single mom to that, it's so much. It is so, so much. But it's also so worth it. I think the biggest challenge in being an entrepreneur and being a single parent is just simply a lack of support. A lot of people don't understand what entrepreneurship really means. And a lot of people don't understand what being a single parent really means. They don't understand the weight that you carry as a single parent or as an entrepreneur. And when you put those two together, that weight is immense. And the only way to combat that is to find a strong support system. And that's not always family. I'm gonna be honest with you, most of the entrepreneurs I know, their families are not their biggest supporters, at least not until they're successful. Once you're successful, everyone supports you. But until you get there, a lot of time family and friends, initial friends, are, are not the first people to support you. They just aren't. And I don't know why that is. In my experience, personally, and in the experience of a lot of other entrepreneurs I know, it's a lot easier to find support from strangers, usually other entrepreneurs, who really get what you're going through and get what you're trying to accomplish. So finding a strong support system a lot of times means branching out, meeting new people, and finding other people that are in your position. Finding other entrepreneurs who understand how much work and dedication it takes to get where you want to be and who understand what you're going through. They're going to be your biggest cheerleaders because they need cheerleaders too. And then you can be cheerleaders for each other. I highly recommend getting out into the world, doing some networking, finding other people in businesses that are either like yours or completely unlike yours, it doesn't matter. You, we don't have to both be photographers for me to understand how hard you work as an entrepreneur and vice versa. I don't care if you make soap or if you build cars. I know that your job takes a lot because as an entrepreneur, so does mine. And I'm, I'm gonna cheer for you. I think that Probably the second biggest challenge that we face is managing time efficiently. There are only 24 hours in the day. And when you're managing an entire household by yourself, that can be a full-time job all by itself. I know, I was a stay-at-home mom for eight years. I know. <laughs> managing a household and children is a full-time job all by itself. If you add on there, managing a business, being an entrepreneur, that's two full-time jobs. And God forbid you happen to have a day job while you build your business. Suddenly you're this one human being working three full-time jobs and trying to figure out how on earth to get it all done. And it is hard. You have to figure out a way to set realistic goals for yourself. So I have a tendency to make this giant list of things that I need to get done in a day. And I know there is no way, no way that I'm going to get them all done because there's four days worth of work on the list. It's not realistic to expect that I'm going to get it all done in one day. So then I have to force myself to sit down and prioritize what has to get done today. What is the most pressing thing? What is the thing that's going to snowball into the next thing? Because I can't do everything. 
I absolutely cannot do everything. And in fact, some things I have to outsource. Like for instance, mowing my grass. I used to always mow my grass. It takes me three hours to mow my yard because my yard is really big. And the, um, the trimming alone takes two or three hours for just me to do it. If I pay a company with a team, they get it done in an hour. And I saved four for myself. Now, sometimes you can't afford to outsource certain things. That's okay. But you have to find a way to have some teamwork within your household to get those things accomplished. So for instance, if your kids are old enough to throw a load of laundry in the washing machine and move it to the dryer, then for the love of God, outsource laundry to those kids. Put them in charge of it. Now you have to create yourself a schedule that's going to allow you work time and still allow you time with family. If you don't have time for family and for play and for fun at all in your schedule, you're going to burn out. You have got to take care of your emotional needs as well. And those include taking time for yourself and taking time for your family. You have to make you a priority. You have to make your family a priority. Not doing so will burn you out and will lose you any support you have from your family. So make a schedule prioritize and outsource where you can. Now when it comes to motivation and staying excited and focused, it's hard. Sometimes you just feel like giving up and I get that 100%. And in those moments, that is when you have to refocus and think to your think about why you are doing this. Why are you building this thing? Are you building it to build a legacy for your family? Are you building it to teach your children that they can literally do anything that they want? Anything that they set their minds to? Are you doing this for financial freedom? Are you doing it for all of those reasons? Because those are mine. It's in those moments when you feel like giving up, when motivation is completely lacking, that you have to sit down. Remember why you were doing this. Refocus on your goals and remind yourself of the overall vision for your future. What was that vision that caused you to start doing all this to begin with? Because that vision is what will keep you motivated. That vision is the reason. That vision is motivation all by itself. And sometimes, sometimes when motivation is completely lacking, in the day-to-day, -day, we just have to sit down and decide to be disciplined and say, look, these are the things that I have to do today and I'm just going to do them. Sometimes we have to commit to the process and just forget about the end result. Don't forget to celebrate the small victories, even the teeniest, tiniest of victories. Celebrate them. Give yourself a reason to stay excited and don't forget to take breaks when you need to. If you need to take the weekend off, because you are just feeling overwhelmed and burnt out, then take the weekend off. Because taking care of your mental health, taking care of you will help you to stay motivated. Being an entrepreneur and a single parent all at the same time is not easy. I am never gonna lie to you and tell you that it's easy. But if you keep the right mindset and you surround yourself with a supportive network and learn some good time management skills, you can do it. You can absolutely do it. I do have a video on time management that I'll link above, at whichever side it's on. Make sure you watch that if that's something that you struggle with and you need some help. But overall, find your tribe. Find those people who understand entrepreneurship, who understand your vision, who understand, who share your philosophy and the life. Those people are going to be your biggest supporters, and you're only going to find them by getting out into the world. You can overcome anything that this world throws at you. You've got to get out of your own head, and you've got to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Get familiar with taking a few risks. I'm not saying you should take a giant risk that, that's so big that it risks you and your family being homeless. Don't do that, okay? <laughs> There's, there's a balance to it, but a few little risks, putting yourself out there in a way that makes you uncomfortable, being open and vulnerable in a way that makes you uncomfortable, sometimes can pay off really, really big. So get good at being uncomfortable, 
find your support system, manage your time, and let's take this world by storm.